Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and I'm here at a local gas station. My plan today was to go someplace a long way from here, like 45 minutes drive from here and photograph some flowers. And I still may go there, but I stopped here to get some coffee this morning. And when I did, I always like to walk around to the back side of this gas station because Wolf Teaver Creek, which you may hear me talk about, flows pretty near here. And sometimes you can walk around to the back of this gas station and see deer. And I just kind of walked back here. And as I looked over here in these trees that are kind of, there's like a, a steep hill. And in these trees, I kept seeing small birds. Now I'm not sure if these small birds that I'm seeing are fantastic birds or basic boring birds, but uh, some of them look like they might be something pretty cool. It's hard to tell, but I do have my 500 uh, no, I have my 200 to 500 F5.6 with me. I wish I had my 500 F4. So I think I'm going to put that on, the 200 to 500, and see if I can get some photographs of these birds. I believe this is Canadian Goldenrod, and you'll note that this is not a bird. When I went back over there after putting the 200 to 500 on the camera, all the birds had left the area. But I got this Canadian Goldenrod photograph, and also I was really happy to get in the nice early morning light a photograph of this really large spider in the middle of its web right behind the gas station. Hello and good morning. It's Bill Thatch and I'm here at the Chattanooga Nature Center and Arboretum, Reflection Riding, it's also called. And my plan here today is to hike out to a field of flowers that I learned about from a video made by Pinky's Adventures. And so it's supposed to be like a 20 or 25 minute hike to get out there. I'm not sure the distance. And uh, I'm hiking now on this gravel trail. Lookout Creek is right over here to my right. This place is kind of at the foot of Lookout Mountain. And it's really beautiful. I have brought lots of gear, too much. I always bring too much. And uh, I've carried my small backpack which did not have room for a big lens. And I kept hearing all sorts of birds. So I've got my, I've got my Z6 and the 200 to 500 just hanging by the front strap of this uh, low pro, pro runner 200 AEW backpack. And uh, I was planning on just using the Z50 today, but I didn't want to have to switch. I'm vlogging right now with the Z50. But this place is beautiful and uh, I'm going to continue hiking and trying to find wildlife to photograph on the way to the flowers. I just passed this field behind me here and it was absolutely full of tiny birds. I think a lot of them were sparrows and uh, they were pretty smart. They could hide until I got close enough to make a picture and then they would flee. So I don't think I got any good pictures of those sparrows, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them were field sparrows. Maybe even some swamp sparrows. I'm not 100% sure because, like I say, I didn't get a picture. But birds are not my goal today. But I thought I'd carry the big lens just in case the opportunity arose. I think I did get a couple of uh, semi-acceptable Eastern Phoebe pictures just before that field. So here is a small in the frame, beautiful photograph of an Eastern Phoebe on this old wooden fence that runs along the trail on the right hand side and a beautiful field on the left hand side. I love this in the morning light, turned out really good. And here's another photograph made with the Z6 and the 200 to 500 of this beautiful purple Fernania plant that was growing as I walked down the trail. Well, I've made it all the way back to what I think is the very back. I could be wrong, but I think this is the back. That's the field where I think the sunflowers were supposed to be these fantastic flowers. And I'm, as usual, too late. But there's still plenty of things to photograph around here. So uh, I'm going to start out with, there's a fallen tree in these woods behind me. And uh, it has some interesting things growing on it. I don't know if it's lichens or or mushrooms, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's really beautiful. So I'm gonna start out making a shot of that. So there's my shot. I had planned to use the Z50 today, but I ended up carrying the Z6 with me and 
So far, I'm only using the Z6, and I have the Tokina 100 2.8, where normally with a Nikon, I would bring the 105 2.8 Nikkor macro, but this is the 100 2.8 Tokina macro lens, and I'm at f11, and I think one fifth or one sixth of a second looking down at the beautiful growth on this fallen tree. I use a two second timer. And there's the shot. Okay, so I ended up making a few shots of this and the one that I liked the best was at F20 and two seconds. And here it is. And I believe this is a mushroom and I believe this mushroom is called Turkey Tail, which is a very appropriate name for this. The creek's right here and I've made a number of photos of the vegetation growing along the creek. I think my favorite one is these tiny little white flowers that uh, they, just the tiniest breeze moves them around. But uh, right now I'm at F11, one eighth of a second ISO 100. And I, I photographed, and I'm not sure how these are gonna come out. I photographed this little plant and this one as well. I think I need to get some flowers. Okay, so here is the first shot that I've got right there in that location that I liked. I love the way the sun was shining on these and I believe this is an oat of some form, a wood oat or a river oat, some sort of oat. And this next is the shot that I was showing you right there in that last cl clip. And best I can tell, this flower may be called a water pepper. I'm not really sure, but whatever it is, it's really beautiful and I like the way this photograph came out. Well, there's not many of them left, but there are some of these beautiful yellow flowers here left. Kind of the last of them. Today's October the 1st. I probably should have been here two weeks or three weeks ago for the peak and then maybe this whole field would have been covered with these things, but I'm late. Uh, but that's fine, there's still plenty of photographic opportunities. And I used my shadow and this diffuser on my shots of this little group of flowers here, not to put shade on the flowers themselves, but I shaded the background so that the background would be nice and dark and not distracting. So I made two or three photos of those flowers here and, and there's some other ones remaining kind of around here and I'll probably use that same technique for them. I, I kind of like the way it turns out. I like a bright flower with a dark background and using myself as a shade and the diffuser, I'm kind of able to attain that. Okay, so I believe this is called Biden's Aristosa and they are really beautiful and it would have been so awesome to have made it there when that entire field was full of them. But still, it was great being able to take photographs of the few that were remaining in early October after hitting their peak probably in the first or second week of September. Really nice the way they turned out with the bright light on them. I found this really tiny insect in these purple flowers down here, these beautiful purple flowers. I was photographing them and then I found this insect and the back of the insect looks like a flower bloom. Uh, super, super tiny. The flowers are super tiny and it's super tiny. And uh, I tried for an embarrassingly long amount of time to get a shot of that insect in focus. And uh, even now that I'm giving up, I'm still not sure if I got one in focus. So uh, if I did, you'll see it now. I learned later that this is called an ambush bug. And that's why it was so still there on those tiny flowers. What they do is they lay motionless and wait for another insect to land on the flower. And when it does, they grab the bug and inject it with digestive fluid, which kills it and then they drink the contents of the other insect's body. This second shot was at F29, which is the better of the two shots, and it took ISO 5600 to get the exposure correct. As I was hiking back, I found this beautiful flower here and made uh, several photographs of it. I used my diffuser on quite a few of the shots, and the, the tricky part was trying to find a background that was dark uh, because it's a big, big flower and I, I wasn't able to make the background dark with my shadow. But uh, I don't know, I tried a lot of different compositions. Hopefully some of them will work. And if so, I'll show them to you now. All right, so this is a spider flower and I think it is just absolutely beautiful. And look at the bokeh background I've got going on here. What I did was I positioned the camera to where there was a tree directly behind the flower so it wasn't a bright background 
and I held the, the, the 12-inch diffuser over the flower so it didn't have bright sunlight on it, made my shot, and then I just got lucky that the areas to the left and to the right of the tree in the background were totally bokeh-fied in this shot. I made several shots, and this one was by far the best one. I hope you like it. Well, I've had a fun morning and early afternoon here at Reflection Riding, Chattanooga Nature Center and Arboretum. Hopefully I got some decent photos. If so, you've already seen them. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, boing, 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 and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.